What's up guys, Shane here for 3D Printing, and today we're checking out some PETG from filaments.ca. Welcome back guys. So I have more filament here from filaments.ca. We're getting through the pile. They sent me quite a bit to check out. And today I have two rolls of PETG. So we have their gunmetal gray. And we have transparent sea green. So I'm actually, I actually need to use some of this because I'm printing out some parts for the Alpha Wise U10. I'm gonna be changing up that printer a little bit and I really needed something else. I needed some ABS or some PETG. I didn't wanna do PLA. So I'm gonna go ahead and print out the parts for that in this. And I'll do a bunch of other prints in these as well. I'll do a couple in each one just to get some, some uh, prints in them. But the boxes are identical. And the only thing difference is just the stickers on them. Are they both safety? Obviously, the only difference is the actual color on them. So it says it's a kilogram, the nozzle 200 to 240, the bed 75 to 85, and the batch number. I always say batch numbers are important because if you have a problem with the filament, send them that. They probably send you a new roll because it could have just been a bad batch. It does happen. All right, so here is the gunmetal gray. Ooh. Here is the transparent sea green. This is like an aquamarine color, and it really reminds me of the protopasta mermaid's tail, just transparent. All right, so each bag comes with a nice regular side desk can pack in it. Their spools are clear, which is great. I mean, you can see everything. They have the little windows here on the side and they have a little scale to kind of give you an idea of how much filament you have left on the spool. They do come saran wrapped just over the filament. As I said before in other videos, I don't know why they do it. I wish they would tell me because I find it rather annoying to pick this off. Some people might like it. I don't know. I find it annoying. Okay, and their gunmetal gray is very a nice dark gray colored. Uh, I would say that this is definitely spool better than this one, but they are still really good. I mean, they, they do spool things very well up there in the Canada. So you have the same stickers on the side as you do on the box. And again, you have the little windows there. So I am super excited. I generally don't like transparent PLAs. I've said that so many times, mainly clear. Clear bugs me. But when you have some kind of color like this, I really want to see what like vases are going to look like in this and something with infill in it just to see what kind of effects it really gets and how clean this can end up printing. So I'll throw this on some of the printers. Probably do a lot of it on the CR10S because that is my, my, this is my PETG, my PETG printer as my workhorse. But I can also do quite a lot on the Unicubic i3 Mega and the GTEC A10. So I will do prints on both of those, but let's definitely get some prints and I'll be right back with the results. Okay, so you see in front of me, I've got lots of prints that I've been just blazing away with this PETG filament. I did a couple, uh, had a couple issues to put it, to put it frankly. So this one here had actually failed on me. I don't know why. Um, it was printing great. I'll show you a close up of it in a minute, but it was printing absolutely fantastically. And all of a sudden it failed on me. I'm not sure what happened there. And then this translucent filament, it prints really weird and then it prints beautifully then it goes printing weird again I actually failed on this one but this and then this one here finished but definitely does not look all that good especially for what this film was this one again i had kind of a mixed results with and then on the bowl it came out perfectly like absolutely perfectly no issues in this one whatsoever I was very hit and miss on this one i, I couldn't really understand why and i also had some other larger long much longer prints again they just kind of were weird so they were both, again, the gray was actually quite excellent. It printed well in every aspect. This teal, yeah, it was okay. So having printed separate uh, things for each, and some of them overlapping to be the same, I went ahead and print out the Trash Walker. So I originally saw this, uh, Joel did a video on printing the Trash Walker, very, very big. I think he did 200%, so it was a humongous print. I just did 100% scale, just my first try at it, wanted to see how it came out, and it did come out very well. Uh, the I went ahead with the vase mode of the can, so I made that in the gray, obviously the legs are in gray, and then the accent pieces, I went ahead and did the teal, and everything went together exactly how it should. Uh, the 
Teal also was a bit stringy, uh, more so than the gray was for some reason. I mean, every color filament has its own properties to it and they all can differ quite a bit, but I did find the teal to be quite a lot more stringy, uh, quite a lot sh more stringier, whatever, uh, than the, the uh, gray. So that was just kind of that. So let me show you a closer look at how these prints turned out and the quality of the prints themselves. All right, so first up here, let's take a look at my maker coin in the gray. I went ahead and printed this twice because on this one, I kind of forgot to do support and it did okay over the bridges, but I really do like to see support underneath there because it makes it look so much better. It's not a ton better, but it is significant enough to notice the difference. And, and overall, I mean, the, the print quality itself was fine. It's a very, very shiny filament. Uh, this was printed on the uh, GTEC A10. It did a pretty good job of it. A little bit rough here along the edges there, but that's like kind of the no cooling deal with PETG. It does have flex to it a little bit because PETG is a little more flexible than PLA is, but it is much stronger overall. Next up, the bowl in the gray looks fantastic. Really, really nice print. Only problem you can see down the bottom there is those are holes. It did not extrude that bottom bit there quite properly. So there are some holes down in there. So it definitely is not watertight, but it does make for a good bowl still. Put things in and a candy dish or whatever, but it does look super duper nice. The resolution on this was great. This was a 0.2 millimeter layer height. You know, you can see the layers in it a little bit, but it still looks like a fantastic bowl. Okay, here's the smaller vase. It's just a little twist vase that I thought was kind of cool. It goes to a very, very small hole and it starts out very small, but as you can see, it really, really gets a lot bigger and twists up into this. It was a very, very cool looking vase. And it, again, printed very well. Layers are very hard to see in this. Super duper hard to see. And the overall, it's very pleasing to look at. So I think we might actually use this one as a little vase. It did seal all the way. This one is watertight, which was great to see. Uh, so yeah, this was a really good one. And as I talked about, here's the big one. And if you look closely, it looks gorgeous. This is on the GTEC A10. Absolute beautiful looking print. It was going really, really well until it stopped. Nice thing about vase mode is wherever it stops, it stops. It doesn't, there's no other big issues anywhere. So I could perfectly keep this as a vase just like this if I wanted to, but I don't have to if I don't want to. It does have a lot of flex to it because again, it is PETG. And had a very good first layer, went down. It's a little bit of glue still on there from the A10 build plate. All right, and here's the trash walker. So again, it turned out awesome. Did have a little bit of issues that other people talked about on this vase mode model. You can see the holes up in here. So that just happens because the overhang on these is far too extreme to do this in vase mode. Uh, if I do the thicker one, then you don't have any of those problems. You could use it for like water, like you actually make this like a little planter if you wanted to. But in vase mode, it does not work out too well at all, but it still does its job. Like I said, you can see here, there are still some wispy strings on the green or the teal, I should say. But overall, I thought it was pretty cool. The, it printed, the A10 printed the legs on this very, very well. As you can see, the resolution was good. Like there's a few little uh, issues, a few little artifacts in here. But I mean, look at the leg. That's all over, I mean, that's all, that prints like this. That's a pretty good slant right there and it printed beautifully. So good on the printer, but the filament also handled it very well, having no cooling being PETG. So I really do like this. I'd like to print a bigger one one day, but I think this will do for now on my desk. All right, moving on to the teal. It has a great color. It's a little more blue in the video than it actually is. Uh, it's very green in person, but it does look really, really nice. It did very well on the supports. You can see very little discrepancies in there. Uh, a little bit of pimply down these bottom layers, which the gray had the exact same problem. Again, big overhangs with uh, no cooling. So you do see a little bit of artifacts in there, but it was a good first layer. Everything else was good. And as you can see, maybe with my hand a little bit, it's a little stringy. Like I said, this one turned out to be a little more stringy than the gray. The gray wasn't stringy at all, actually. Uh, but this one just had a little bit to it. And, but that's okay. But you just so you can see the difference there. So here's that little twist vase that failed. And here's the one that completed. 
but this one shows it the best. If you look, see how it's all kind of glossy down here? Not glossy, like frosted looking almost. You can't really even see my fingers through that. But then it comes up a little bit and then it gets super duper smooth and clear in here. Very smooth and clear. Then it gets to that frosted bit again up here and then it fails. I'm not sure if maybe there was just a little too much moisture in the filament. Uh, I'm just unclear on the, what, that, what happened with that. This one, again, got fairly clear here in the middle and they got mucked up. I didn't have any of that problems with the gray. I only had it with this color. And to print something a little different and a little bit cooler looking in my opinion, I printed out this giant Lego crystal formation. So this is actually a great big Lego piece scaled up. I think this is 500% uh, of it or 400% scale of the actual uh, Lego uh, brick, I guess we'll call it the model of the brick. Yeah, so this was just something kind of cool. I would love to do this in a vase mode maybe, or just like two or three perimeters, because this right here is gonna be kind of tough, this flat part here. And to make this into like a nightlight, I wonder if someone could make it printable, maybe angle this part up a little bit, just to make it more printable in vase mode. And then, yeah, put a little light underneath of it. I think that would look cool. But no, this turned out great. This was on the, uh, this was on the Anycubic i3 Mega. And yeah, really good layer resolution on it. Not too bad at all. Two walls, four tops, four bottoms, 20% 20, 20 infill. And you can see the infill in there, the honeycomb infill. But yeah, again, this printed very, very well and it came out very clean. Very long print though, because it was only printing slow. I think this took almost, uh, what, 30 hours to print this out. Very slow. I had this vase again. Uh, I did it on the, this is a kind of like one of the standard ones I do. It's a make anything vase. But again, a little bit of like frostedness going on down bottom. Real clear in the middle, frosted at the top. Don't know why it was doing it, but it was doing it. Finally, like I said before, here is the bowl in the uh, teal filament, and it looks fantastic. Nice, clear, you know, transparent, translucent uh, look to it. Very good color. It did split on me right here. I was doing some little bit of testing, and that did split on me, so. That's okay, not a big deal, but I did really like this one and this color. This And again, no, there's no variation with like how it's like etchy looking here to this. This is completely clear all the way through. So I don't know what's going on with that. So there's the filaments.ca PETG or PETG filament. The gray printed fantastic. The teal most of the time. I think, what they call this teal color? Sea green, sorry, this is sea green teal to me. It printed well most of the time, but not all the time. I can't really narrow down exactly what the problem was. Again, there might've been some moisture in the filament at certain points, but they all happened at different times. Like these three models were not printed together and they were printed on three different machines. I tried to switch it up a little bit just to do a little more testing with other ones. So again, I'm not 100% sure what was going on with all of it, but most of it printed well. Take that for what it's worth to you. Uh, if you kind of want to have a chance with it, great. The gray, absolutely nice solid color, which is great to see. I hate seeing transparent. Um, the translucents, are, they have their place, but to have a nice, very full, completely opaque color in a PETG is fantastic. And I really did like this gray. It's very strong. I've printed a few other things in it as well. Uh, I have a, a bracket right here for a spool holder, which I recently found this on Thingiverse. This was printed on the uh, Mark III, the original Prusa Mark III printer. It did not handle the PETG very well. For some reason, I printed this bracket also in PLA, which is hanging up here holding the PETG that printed this. And it did mostly okay, except over this one weird spot here. I have no idea what happened there, but it failed pretty hardcore on that. And it peeled up a little bit off the PEI. So I think if I would use some glue stick and slow it down quite a bit, I think it would have done better. But overall, very smooth print. I mean, that printer is bar none the best. I'm trying to think if I had anything else printed now. I think that was everything. I printed a lot with this stuff, uh, quite a bit actually. Just another quick survey round. Uh, oh, I did print, uh, now I think about it, I did go ahead and print. This is for uh, one of the uh, recent projects that I did, which was designing a bracket for the baby gate. And I went ahead and printed it in PLA just to kind of do the test. And then I printed the actual parts in the end in PETG. This is with three, three perimeters, four top, four bottom, 30% infill, super duper strong part. 
because there's gonna be an eyelet that goes here in the front and I'm just gonna have a one-year-old racketing it all the time because she wants to get out and she's not allowed. So I think this will hold up very, very well compared to um, the PLA. If I had ABS, I'd probably would've used that, but this PTG will serve uh, well in that application. So as always, guys, my disclaimer, this film was sent to me by filaments.ca for the purposes of review. No money was exchanged either way. Uh, the only thing that was given to me was the filament to give my review of it. Again, the gray, fantastic. The sea green, meh. Make your decisions on what you guys think. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, and if you think you may or may want, want to pick up this video, either way, give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. Talk in the comments down below. Either way, I'd love to hear from you guys what you guys think about this filament or how I do the film reviews. If you guys want to stay in tune with what's going on, become a subscriber. Hit that big old subscribe button down there. Hit the bell icon, that way you get an email notification when I upload new content or I do live streams. I'm gonna do more live streams for you guys. So make sure that you hit that and be on the notification squad. If you guys support me financially, right below me is a Patreon link. Go ahead and click that, donate a dollar more, become part of the Patreon squad, and that way you get access to my Patreon feed, you help out the channel, and you get access to my after show, which I do after almost every new video that I'm putting out. So make sure you guys tune in there. Donate to me some other ways. There's some Streamlabs, buy me a coffee link down there, or use any of the affiliate links and discount codes down below. There's lots of them, so please check them out. Do your daily shopping with those, and a little percentage of what you guys buy comes here to help me out the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, happy printing.